Hi, welcome back. So last class we talked about the basics of graphics, rasters, pixels, screens, how it all, all, what all the basic fundamentals are. And now we're going to learn a bit more about rasterization, this, this fundamental problem underlying all graphics in the, in the modern world. Okay, so raster, rasterization, we, we talked a little bit already, but it's this process um, of going from it's this process of going from some data, raw data format in some format to pixel values. So you have it stored in memory. We've talked about this before. You have it stored in memory and now you need to turn it into pixels. So we'll start by actually looking at a slide. So we'll look at slide one. Let's take a peek if I can get this to work. Ta-da. All right. So here's an example of how this looks. Um, let's fix that. Here's an example of how this looks. So we have this, this problem here, well, sorry, the shape here, where we have all these line drawing commands. We specify some lines to make a shape. We call this a vector because it's just vectors, just lines or curves and shapes defining how we want it to look. But here's what our pixel grid looks like. We have a raster. So we need to go from this vector format all the way over to these blocks to a raster because that's what our display is, right? And that actually takes a lot more um, steps than you than you might imagine. Okay, is that gonna work? There we go. So let's talk a bit more about that. So let's talk about this this idea of these vector graphics and raster graphics. Oops, let's change it to black. So vector um, versus raster. Now we've talked a bit about raster already. So raster graphics, nothing new here. Grids of pixels, right? This is as already learned. However, now we have these vector graphics that I want to talk about. And vector graphics are still very popular. Um, they're not going anywhere. Some people think they're old fashioned. But as you're going to learn, they're not. Like everything we do is based in vector graphics. Pretty much everything we do. So basically, instead of creating a picture or an image as a series of pixels on a grid, instead with vector graphics, we define them as a series of drawing commands. As a series of draw commands just like in a slide, right? In the slide, you saw that we have a line, 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 line. You generate that, and that's a vector graphics. So sometimes we consider these to be mathematically, de um, mathematically defined. And we also say that they can scale up indefinitely. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. Not sure if I spelled that right. So there's infinite precision. And of course, these are, these are, you know, in air quotes because nothing is perfect and we'll talk about, we'll talk about those limitations. So if I take a look back at the slide here, we can see that if I want to scale in on this, on this um, raster graphic, if I want to zoom in very quickly, it gets blocky and I can't really see any detail. But if I zoom in on the vector graphics, because it's just a drawing command from some, some coordinate to some coordinate, you can go in, you can go in, you can go in, and that line will stay sharp. Now, it's not infinite or indefinite here because we have these, it's supposed to be a curve, but this curve is blocked because we approximate it with lines. However, if I mathematically define this as a curve, I could zoom in as far as I want to, okay? And it wouldn't lose this precision. I could zoom in, I still get this line drawing command, it still looks good. I zoom in on the raster over here and it gets blocky. Um, 
for those who are interested, you, you um, these are very common file formats you'll come across. So last class we talked about file formats for raster graphics being JPEGs or PNGs or TIFFs, um, those kinds of things. For vector graphics, they're SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, Standardized Vector Graphics, I probably should know. Um, EPS, which stands for Encapsulated Postscript, it uses printer language, it's very common if you use LaTeX or LaTeX for your, for your documents. Um, PDF files can do both. But PDFs do a lot of vector graphics, which is nice. If you've used Adobe Illustrator AI files, um, EMF, Enhanced Meta File, this is basically the Windows version of the EPS file. Um, so all of these file formats, they're not raster graphics. They're not grids of pixels. They're lists and lists of drawing commands. So keeping in mind that when you're dealing with graphics, a lot of what you're going to do is in software. It's not on the screen. So because of that we want to stay in the vector graphics as long as possible so much of what you do is in software right so i'm going to define a shape with drawing commands cool and then if i zoom in or zoom out it shouldn't matter as much until the last minute i can keep that precision or i can shrink it i can grow it i don't want to worry about the raster detail and the dots per inch and the clarity until I have to. So much of what we do is in software, we keep vector as long as possible. However, because our displays are raster displays, we, st we can't keep vector until the end. Vector graphics must be rasterized before displayed on a raster display. So vector graphics must be rasterized. What a cool word, hey? Um, I should also do these. They must be rasterized before you can show you can um, display. Or I should say, should say a different word. Before you can show. Come on. Um, on a raster display. So because um, your monitors are all raster displays, we can keep things in vector graphics as long as we want, but before we can show it to a user, we have to rasterize it. Cool. So let me just, I'm having a couple more, oops, a couple more slides I want to show. Um, come on. All right. Here's another example of vector versus raster graphics very common with fonts to use vector graphics and that's so that you keep that perfect smoothness no matter what level of detail you're at. When, if we rasterize an S for example, if you zoom out it might look quite nice but as you zoom in you can see all the dots and the pixels and it's not common now but for a long time you would get bitmapped or raster fonts and each size would have its own data file so when you change the size of your font it would load a new file in um, to display it at that right resolution. More commonly now, fonts are vector graphics. And see how smooth this is? And see when I zoom in how smooth that S is? That's because it's a vector graphic. Now, of course, you're looking at this on a raster display. So this has been rasterized. In fact, it was rasterized for my slide, right? But it was rasterized at the optimal resolution, the last minute, so you can keep all the detail you can. These curves here were defined mathematically. We won't cover them in this class, but they're splines. There's, there's a really cool technique, splines and B-splines for, for defining curves. We won't cover it in this class, but they were kept there as long as possible. So when you finally ra rasterize it at this big size, it still looks sharp. All right. And that was slides two and three. I'm gonna keep putting these in the notes um, so you can look at them when you want to and refer to them um, to comma three. Now, I, there is a caveat here. The caveat is not all displays are raster. There is such a thing as a vector display. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a certain, there, there's a, there are kinds of displays that actually do display um, vector graphics. They're kind of falling out of fashion because rasterization has gotten so good.
So CRT screens that we've already talked about with the scan lines, well, instead of following on the scan lines, people can actually make the guns move in the shape they want to. So if you've used an analog oscilloscope, it uses this technique. Old video games would sometimes, like really old, I mean like Pong old, if you look them up online, or asteroids old in the arcade, they would use just really perfect clarity lines. They weren't using raster graphics. They were actually moving the gun around and drawing the shapes and glowing in a vector by, um, based on the vectors in memory. So we do have vector displays. Another place you might have seen, um, another place you might have seen vector displays is plotters. Now most of you probably don't know what those are. Plotters are printers. They're printers used in architecture. And instead of like printing a whole page out with a laser printer, you have this machine that actually goes and a hand comes out, it grabs a pen and then it goes and it draws, draws your shapes on the display, on the paper rather. So these are actually vector graphic displays. They render directly from vector onto your screen or your paper and they don't actually rasterize. But those are pretty rare. Okay. Yeah, and I've already said this before and it's in my notes, I'm gonna repeat myself because it's really important. Um, so many components that we're gonna learn, they stay in vector form, like your font, right? They stay in vector form, you know, they stay as a list of drawing commands as long as possible. Okay, to maximize flexibility. And the way that you will uh, see this these days in 3D graphics, for example, is we define a shape as a series of lines or a series of triangles. And why triangles will come back to. Um, but even with really high-end video, uh, video games, if you zoom in, you'll see that, forget the yellow lines for a second, these are called normals, and we'll talk about them later in the course. But you see if I zoom into a 3D shape that we have all this geometry here, all these details, these drawing commands, even though they're a little bit chunky, um, they do this to maintain the flexibility. If I zoom out versus zoom in, I don't have to worry about re uh, raster resolution, okay? And if, you know, this is actually a file where you can actually load each one of these, have coordinates. These are coordinates of the triangles, the vertices, um, X, Y, and Z. We'll come back to coordinates um, later in this unit, actually. But I wanted to just to highlight that we store these things in coordinates, uh, in, in drawing commands, as lines, as triangles, as basic shapes, as long as possible. We don't jump straight to rasterize, rastering. That was more popular in the 90s. Now it's very, very not, not very common. You keep things vector, you keep them drawing commands as long as you can, and then you come back uh, later uh, sorry, then you come back to the problem of rasterization at the last moment and then turn it into pixels. Okay, I think this is a good time to take a break. Uh, we'll come back and we'll learn a little bit more about raster data um, before jumping into the rest of the unit.